days I remember Thomas Mann, uh, the magic mountain a lot. The hero of, uh, of Thomas Mann in the magic mountain is Hans Kastorf and he spent uh, seven years in a lung sanatory. And the last chapter of Thomas Mann is uh, when the First World War broke out and then uh, Hans Kastorf had to leave this sanatory. And this, uh, for me, it was absolutely readable now with our situation in the COVID time, where we were isolated and very occupied with ourselves, and now the war is breaking out and nobody is talking about the incidence rates anymore. Time, yet not the time told by the station clock, moving with a jerk five minutes at once, but rather the time of a tiny timepiece the hand of which one cannot see move, or the time the grass keeps when it grows. So unobservably, one would say it does not grow at all, until some morning the fact is undeniable. This destruction of solidarity into many, many individual groups and their own concerns is this was what makes isolation. Also this kind of surveillance, mutual, mutual surveillance, at as well as in the state. That the decision to produce this research in the form of a book is also a different decision from doing it as uh, an art installation or doing it as a, a podcast series or something. If I read history now in a linear sense, it is quite going like this to the catastrophe. Our effort, or, or, or I think the effort of a lot of persons is, okay, let's look in the history and let's look to the alternatives mm. there were all the time uh, alternatives. I guess it is very interesting to think on one side of this kind of development of, of an alphabet, mm. right? Mm. Like, uh, like you are doing, or of a method. And on the other side, on this kind of contingency of this method. Mm. And not as a, oh, it is only contingency. No, it is a hope at this word apocalypse, this other mm -hmm. Greek word which is composed of, uh, to, like, it means to reveal. Mm -hmm. And so what you realize is that the Greeks did not mean actually that you have an apocalypse. Sadly for us, <laughs> in this moment it, it's a regular event, it happens and then we get back up again on our feet and we mm -hmm. build it back together again and then, and then it happens again. And um, there is something very much, there is something very dangerous, clearly, about this sort of narrative of apocalypse because it, it creates uh, a kind of magnetism for people who are scared and people, for example, who are coming out of the military or the, or the police with PTSD and then they are uh, sort of uh, taken advantage of by these extremist groups and then they are kind of persuaded into this narrative of the savior complex and all the rest of it. The line is very thin between someone like Dugin and, and, uh, and someone like Rudolf Steiner, for example. Yeah. And Steiner is also the same era as, as your references earlier. And, um, you know, no matter which way you cut that story, it's, it's deeply racialized and, and really not appropriate. Um, and yet ever present in the architecture of democracy, in the architecture of neoclassicism. It looks like Woodstock. Yeah, and then they stormed the parliament, and I think it was this kind of dynamic. <gasps> we are all here, we are not isolated. We are, it was this kind of euphoria to be together. I think also today, I mean, these extremist groups are organized, very, very well organized, and bring isolated people in, but then forge, I think, also bonds. Crowds give them power. They have really understood it. It's really, I mean, when we say the machine does the organizing, they're still able to bring bodies to the picket line. Okay? And it's a new picket line. It's a new, new organizing principle. Extremism itself is a galvanizing agent. It, it, it leads people into, because it's going back to like the very earliest kind of origin stories of thought and consciousness and mankind itself, um, but these people are mostly, I would say, not exposed to those types of narratives and so they become very deeply involved in them um, because they do more than the plastic surface level media Netflix show is ever going to give them. You use the term uh, hall of mirrors, this kind of memory palace 
where real life is taking place, where it's, it's not taking place in real in-person interactions. These, like, they're conspiracy fantasies. They're not even conspiracy theory. There's no logic. It's pure fantasy. But when that expresses itself in real life, the center cannot hold. And I think that that's, that's like the difference that you were saying. There, there is this like lack of any real social cohesion on which anything can rest. Even though it looks like good organization, it's just, it's, it's, it's fantasy. This is like my, the modern crucifix, you know? <laughs> it is operative and it has an agency. Mm. Mm.